travel reality show, Take Me to China Xinjiang, heads to one of the furthest trading outposts in the world, Kashgar. There, the guests explore two products of the Silk Road, musical instruments and carpets. Xinjiang, the largest provincial division in China, sprawls more than 1.6 million kilometers. For a traveler, that's a lot of ground to cover. That's why we, the hosts of Take Me to China Xinjiang, got some help. We held a competition seeking two English speakers to come to China for the experience of a lifetime. Meanwhile, we also held a competition to find two Chinese citizens who speak English. They will represent their nation by guiding the foreign guests. One Chinese woman with a foreign man, and one Chinese man with a foreign woman. Please join us as we travel all over this amazing land. Hello, I'm Brendan Madden. And I'm Dave Kellogg. Welcome to Take Me to China, Xinjiang. In the heyday of the Silk Road, Kashgar was one of the centers for trade, attracting business from all over the old world. Even now, Kyrgyz, Uzbeks, Pakistanis, Kazakhs, Russians, Tajiks, Hui Chinese, Han Chinese, and Uyghurs, as well as gaggles of tourists, continue to shop and trade here. Kashgar's business success through history and its future business success rely on its location in a geographical sweet spot. The city acts as the western gate out of China, it finding itself within proximity to Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and India. But items have not just flowed through the gateway city. Crafty Kashgarians, not wanting to simply be the penultimate middlemen, thought to create original wares as well. Knife makers, clothing makers, carpenters, instrument makers, weavers, you name it. Kashgar offers its own brands for all of these businesses. And these businesses have not just proven successful locally. They too flowed and even continue to flow along the Silk Road. Ultimately, they have influenced places such as Eastern China in unexpected ways. For this episode, our guests will explore two businesses that can rightfully claim made in Kashgar. One makes traditional carpets, the other traditional instruments. As always, our foreign guests must learn vocabulary words to help them communicate while they travel through Xinjiang. Today, they will learn a few more words of Mandarin Chinese, the dominant language of China. Today, we're going to split up and explore some of the shops around town. You guys ready? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. See ya. The first ones I like. 我喜欢. 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 I don't like. 我不喜欢. 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 I'm hungry. All right. 我饿. 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 Is that your store? Yes. Yeah. How how long you have been here, this store? Um, it's been a long time. My long time. Family. Yeah. Is sixth generation of making musical instruments. I'm oh. the sixth generation. He explained that the Uyghur instruments owe their variety to the Silk Road. Many many years ago, yeah. uh -huh, and a lot of people walking in this road. In and this road. Yes, this Silk Road. Uh, the Silk, Silk Road. Some of the people from Europe mm -hmm. take their instrument. Uh -huh. The Chinese people take their instrument. Uh -huh. Yeah. And every people come here uh -huh. and playing. Uh -huh. Yeah. So the many of the musical instruments are mixture. Oh, uh, so you that's can cool. find all kinds yeah. of instruments yeah. in Xinjiang. The instrument craftsmen should probably give more credit, however, to Uyghur influence on Chinese. Instruments. One Central Asian scholar has pointed out that just as cotton and jade went from Xinjiang to China, so too did musical instruments. Stringed instruments such as the Chinese lute and hammered dulcimer likely owe their origins to the western regions, that is, the area of Xinjiang. 
This one is called Raba. 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 A W A P. Raba. Raba. And its wood is mulberry wood. He selected another instrument to show how painstakingly they embed the decorations. Oh, it looks cool, yeah. Yeah. Just its decoration, three months. Oh, three just months. the decoration, yes. three months. How long you need? How so, long does it take time for that? For this kind that, of guitar? Yeah, yeah. It's almost four months. Four, four months. months. Wow. A varnish. Yeah. And to put the string. Yeah. Uh -huh. Make the tuning peg. Uh -huh. Yeah. The plane. Yeah. Uh -huh. Next little bit. One uh -huh. quarter. Uh -huh. Guar Banja's family has a factory to make the instruments. They use the store to sell and fix them. They sell about 15 of the possible 40-something Uyghur instruments in existence. Do you can play any instrument here in this room? Uh, almost. Yeah, almost. almost? Wow. And in your family, everybody can play instruments? Of course. Oh, wow. Because if you don't play this instrument, you yeah. can churn. Yeah. Uh -huh. We can't understand which place is not good. Yeah. Uh -huh. We can't find. Yeah. So we should want to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So which you like, you can learn. <laughs> Should I learn one? <laughs> yeah, like to try this one? <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. Marcus and Feline first entered a carpet store and were amazed at the variety of styles. In Silk Road times, carpets were traded through Xinjiang further west and east. Patterns and techniques from Persia, as well as eastern China, influenced Xinjiang carpet weaving. The most expensive carpets were always silk, but cashmere carpets have proven the norm in the Uyghur home. Marcus and Feline spoke to the carpet vendor for more information. So you can see the shape of pomegranate here. It's kind of unique style uh -huh. in, in Kashgar. Okay. So pomegranate is represented because the pomegranate have a lot of seeds inside. Right. So it's represent like a lot of ethnicity getting together. Oh, cool. Mm. Just like Kashgar here. Yes, it's mini. in fact like Kashgar here, a lot of ethnicity right. living it's here and. Uh, Okay, many different people yes. coming together. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Oh my, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's awful. <laughs> I cannot play one tone. I'm really bad in that. Oh my god. Can I maybe add some drums or a guitar? Can I try this one? He showed Liana a Finnish robot. American music. Uh -huh. Benjo. Benjo. Ah, like a ben like a bench. I'm pretty bad in that. These are not my kind of instruments. How will you hold that here? Right. While Liana continued to search for her Uyghur instrument, Marcus and Feline next sat down with the manager of a hand-woven carpet factory. Does she know much about Kashgar uh, carpets? In olden times, the Kashmir carpets held around 180 threads per square meter. With better techniques, the number of thread per square meter has since doubled. Actually, this carpet, uh -huh. this part is used the, a like uh, uh, cotton, cotton uh -huh. lines, and this part is uh, cashmere. Right. And okay. uh, when they tie those two things together, uh -huh. it's very, uh, it's very stable, uh -huh. and it can contain, it can live, live for more than 120 years. What will they do with most of these carpets? The carpet made here are uh, sells all over the world. Oh, cool. <laughs> all right. And, and so, and we in the Uyghur you the Uyghur house, 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 the Uyghur So maybe some of them are machine made? And yes, some of them are machine made, but they, she said that uh, the machine made one, they roll the, the, uh, uh, the the lines in different uh -huh. ways, so it's not stable and beautiful as this handmade one. So that's why it's more okay. expensive. Okay. Mm. Yeah, usually handmade things are always better. Usually. Marcus then asked who does most of the weaving. Uyghur uh, housewives. 
doing this job. Housewives. <laughs> Most are housewives. Yeah. Okay. The instrument search continued for Liana. This one is very common uh -huh. for mukam playing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. For like How to like play this. that? First, you hold like this way. Then you use middle finger uh -huh. and you play the shore of the drum. Uh -huh. The first way is like this. Like. It's the simplest way of playing. <laughs> That's the simplest way. Uh, okay, I have to. <laughs> for what is this actually? This one is for dancing. For if, dancing. Like, beginning of the music, mm -hmm. we are just playing this. The music is playing, uh -huh. you play, just uh. start. I can do that. <laughs> can you play. Uh, a f your favorite song is your favorite instrument. Uh -huh. Marcus and Feline met an expert weaver in the hopes she could teach them how to weave a carpet. What, what about the patterns? Um, do you know, does, do they get to choose the patterns or do they make them themselves or where do the patterns come from? Oh, okay. Have, it's all written out for Yes. Oh, okay. It's all right now, so you need okay. to follow the, follow the oh, process. So hard. It's all right, already right down. So. Yeah. So these patterns are really beautiful, but is there any symbolic meaning, maybe religious or yeah, anything? Those designs are mm -hmm. basic on the Uyghurs, some kind of traditional Uyghur flowers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, those flowers represent some meanings. Like uh, here, the green and uh, white part, uh -huh. it shows a cloud. Uh -huh. And this blue, uh -huh. it represents the sky. Uh -huh. It's right. kind of tradition designs carpet in all the plates in Uyghur's home, uh -huh. and there's a flower in the in the middle. Right. So this flower is that flower. Okay. Mm. The woman explained why she became a weaver. Because uh, her have a lot of friends doing this job. She has a lot she of saw, friends. Uh, uh -huh. She thought it's very interesting to doing this okay. job. Also, like in Uyghur's family, normally the uh, females need to stay at home right. doing the housework. Uh -huh. But if you're doing this job. Uh -huh. You are not only make a life and uh -huh. also uh, kind of independent. Right. Marcus and Feline tried to weave their own small section. So first, you roll this here, uh -huh. turn around, turn around, twist it around, twist it around, uh -huh. and put it here. Okay. Turn around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, twist it. Put uh -huh. it down here. Ah. See this. See? One handed. Easy. She did it one handed. Yeah, she, wow. she did it with one hand. Has she been doing this for a long time? She just doing that for one month. One month. Like this. Come on, do it. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> okay. Yeah. She used one hand. You use two no. hands. Please. Uh, Hello. Okay. Just, just. Mm, mm. Now pull tight. Pull Go it. down. Ah, oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> Oh, what happened? What's wrong you said you? I was doing good. Just as these two travelers should probably leave the weaving to the experts, Liana and June should probably leave the music to them as well. All right, Marcus and Feline. Yes. How was the day today? Well, I actually we had a, a really amazing day. I think the highlight was that I tried. <laughs> <laughs> and I really tried to play the instruments today. Usually it takes them about two months, a month and a half to two months. To make probably a... take me a good year or so. I like... Uh, yeah. I don't like... Well, Bu Sihuan. I'm hungry. Uh, yes, I am. Well, oh. If you, you could choose out of the four yeah, instruments, yeah. which is your, what's your instrument? Oh. Uh, the flute. The flute? Yeah. Uh, you heard it. You heard it from uh, Liana. The flute. <laughs> <laughs>